Hello and welcome back to the Winter Disco Tabletop Gaming Channel, where we look at all things Warhammer 40k, Age of Sigmar, Dungeons and Dragons, and a whole bunch of other tabletop stuff. In this video, we are looking at the currently missing models from the new Necron range. There is a ton of models that we all have images for. We know they're coming soon, probably in the next few months, but we're going to do an overview because I'm in love with these models. So let's get into that. So you can see there are a ton of different models. We have the main image in the middle, which has mostly new models and a little cheeky one in there we nobody knows about yet but we're going to go through all the models that we can that do not have release dates so first up we're going to look at the locust heavy destroyer so this is a new version reimagined version much much more chunkier than the old version and i prefer this one a lot more honestly not a big fan of the huge six exhaust but it's nice nonetheless um it gives a lot more weight to the model where the old ones were very skinny and slim and I didn't think that was really that suited for a big heavy weapon platform so there are two um, variations to this which you can kind of make out we've got the moving image as well from some of the footage too I I do like the model like I said the exhausts are a bit much um, I don't particularly like the curve I think I may if I get one of these I might do a little bit of extra stuff just to get rid of that curve make it a bit harsher it looks very imposing that gun is just massive i really want to see this um up against a few other models because this is just a really big boy don't know what size the base is i don't recall what the old one was um, but we'll have to wait and see so yeah there we go the locust heavy destroyer next up we have the new train pieces called the convergence of dominion so you get two, uh, three of these they're called star seals they're going through various levels of decay i don't think it was necessary to have three different ones in there i think the placement of them on the battlefield has an effect um, because the description is that they bolster units from your dynasty that are nearby and with the help of a friendly cryptic can perform translocation protocols to redeploy across the field i imagine that where they're placed you'll be able to redeploy say i don't know uh, six inches from one you can um, translocate warriors to another one of the star steels just i'm assuming that's how it's going to work and how you place them there I like the design. Um, I do love the crumbling effect. I think that, like I said, I don't think you need to have three. I think one or two is fine. Maybe even have them smaller. But they do create a very imposing thing on the battlefield. As a lot of the Necron range is, there's actually a lot of imposing figures, which makes, makes sense for the Necron range. They're an ancient race, millions of years old, and they controlled the galaxy. They won a war and <laughs> beat everyone in the entire galaxy. They enslaved gods. So it's fine that they have big imposing things because it should be big and imposing. Like I said, I do like it. I particularly like the one that's not crumbled away. It's like this hint as we have this stone, but underneath there is this mechanical industrial mechanism, which is really nice. And I'm interested to see how that actually works. So based on that description, it looks like you need to have a cryptech nearby to actually make it work whether it has to be near one that you're moving from or one that you're moving to. Not sure yet, and we'll see how that comes out. I don't imagine that these models will be out much later than, I guess, the first wave of the Necrons, which will probably be, if we're looking at um, Indominus in end of July, there'll be a little bit of a gap, and then probably August sometime they might get released. Um, I think... Because it is a train piece, they'll probably release it up front. It's like the big piece of terrain. Next up, we have the Void the Voiden Dragon. Wow, no, the Void Dragon Shard, which is a piece of the Void Dragon Katan from Mars. Ooh, very good. Um, I have another video about this. It goes a bit more in depth. I just love, love, love the wings and that head or, and lack of face. I just, there's something about it that just is so alien and foreign, very Lovecraftian and like that cosmic horror thing. And I really did talk about that in the video specifically on this model. So you can go check that one out. So that's one I'm actually really looking forward to. It's gonna be a big centerpiece, big challenge to paint. So the Canoptic Doomstalker is the offsider of the other long-legged fellow from the Indominus box set. And this is the heavy weapons variation where the one in the Indominus box set is about healing and um, raising up the Necrons. This one has a Doomsday Blaster mounted on its back and Auxiliary Twin Gorse Blasters. There's been a bit of discussion about how to pronounce that. Some people go Gauss. I'm going Gorse. I don't know why Gorse just seems to 
roll off the tongue a bit easier. Um, I love the designs of these types of models. I'm hoping that the legs are maneuverable. I don't know if it will be um, because you do have those, I guess those little mini pistons in the center of the model, but I'm hoping that the legs are fully posable so you can move it around and get it like crawling up over a wall or something. I think that'd be really cool. And I love the design. It is so creepy, very War of the Worlds, very um, The Matrix, particularly from the Animatrix, New Renaissance or something, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but they had a lot of creatures and robots like this. So I do love this design. So I am very keen to get my hands on one of these. Then we have the Silent King. Um, yeah, the, what can you say about this? This is just a, an amazing kit. There's so much going on. I mean, you've got the Silent King himself. You've got the two offsiders um, with their creepy faces, which are nice. The two things on the side, which I've been calling glyphs. I don't know if an official name has been given out yet. I don't recall it. Um, I'm interested to see how they work. I just imagine that they cycle around this giant Gravitron throne. <laughs> and of course, the Silent King there. But of course, you have the, the Katan trapped in there. It's really nice. I love the paint job on these. I love the color design, this um, very creepy greeny blue purpley color i guess and the gradients there i think you can do some really cool paint jobs with this i'd like to see some other colors just to see how they go but yeah i mean this is a massive centerpiece it is very tall yeah i kind of want all of it this is sort of like i've mentioned it a lot but yeah i do love the this alien design lovecraftian design i've always imagined the necrons as this silent force that just moves on you without speaking without sounds you only hear the sounds of the weapons of the um ghost blasters and the range the, the new range really seems to exude that that absolute silence you have the new necrons just shambling forth um i can just imagine the silent king standing there just gazing over everything possibly like a hum and crackle of this uh eldritch green lightning coming out maybe the horrified moans and screams of the trapped katan but they just keep moving forward ever silent and like i said i think the range really is showing that just this creepy unknowable thing i love it now we have the new necron blackstone monolith so we only have this image so far and i've pulled up a version of the old monolith which I can't seem to find on the Games Workshop website anymore. I feel like they've taken that off and I don't know how long ago that was. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I couldn't find it. I think the updated version is brilliant. I love it. I never liked the old version. It felt too plain and simple. I love the overall shape of it. Never really liked the, um, the lollipop bit in the middle. <laughs> the one that you get on a ring as a kid. I um, always found that a bit strange. And the lack of detail on the paneling but i think this new version is really nice the paneling is a bit broken up offset um it is starting to chip away you have like that black stone that's chipping away i like the fact that it's not a perfect sphere in the middle and I imagine that that whole mechanism rotates around each other to generate some kind of field and you have necrons coming out so that necron coming out seems to be teleporting through so it's half done which I hope is part of the model. I really like that. I just love that idea. But yeah, I think this design is a lot better. It's almost like that top section of the three rings looks like bone in a way, which is very reminiscent of what the Necrons aren't, what they used to be. Yeah, I really do like the design. I don't know if it's bigger than the old version. I've tried to scale it closely. I feel that the new version is a little bit bigger, but... It is hard to tell. But yeah, I'm keen for this model. I like it. I love the mix of the metal and the stone and the crackling green energy. I think it's a really cool model. Next up, this is the one that really no one seems to know what it is. I call it the Creepy Boy or the Necron Nothic. If you're not aware of Dungeons and Dragons, there is a type of creature called a Nothic. And as soon as I saw this part of the image with this creepy boy in the background, I instantly thought nothing. He has that smiling face with a single eye, the same similar hunched over pose. The image is difficult to make out exactly what it is. Seems to have some kind of guns on them, an extra arm even. So not really sure what that is. I'm hoping that the face looks like the nothing, like this giant single eye with this grin, because that's what it looks like to me. Um, 
So this is probably some stalky boy that gets in the back line. So I'm keen to see that one. I don't know if it's the one I'm most excited about, but I'm keen to know more. It's very intriguing. And I think Games Workshop have placed him there on purpose and not talked about them. I think that ties into what kind of role that unit would play. So yeah, that one I'm really keen about. So there we go. Um, comment below which one you are most excited about. To be honest, I'm excited about a lot of them. Um, the Locust Heavy Destroyer, and that's probably the weakest one. I'm not overly interested. I don't particularly like the design. I like the top design and the gun. I don't like the exhaust system. I think something else could be done there. The um, Dominion things, what are they called again? The Convergence of Dominion. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, I like the more the outside version than the cutaway version with the stone ore come off. I think it could be good for some terrain pieces as well. Obviously, it is kind of terrain, but it is very useful terrain. So I'm interested to see how that wool works because I think they'll have a massive effect on how you play. So depending on where you place them on the battlefield, if you can place them like in opposition um, deployment zones, that would be huge. I don't think that'll happen. Of course, the Silent King and the Void Dragon, they're just stunning models. Um, the Monolith is a step up in design. I mean, they've taken the same shape and the silhouette, so it's recognizable to be a Monolith, but I do like the... Um, way forward that they've gone with the extra paneling to break it up a bit because the old one was a bit a bit drab and of course the canoptic long leggy boy um, I'm probably excited most for that one just because it is so creepy and you, I, I'm hoping like I said when I talked about it that the legs are fully posable I doubt that's the case but I am hoping and even if it's not it's designed in a way that you can easily cut it and then, you know, shave it up and green stuff a bit, bits here and there. I think it'll be fine. But of course, you have the creepy boy. I want to know. That's the model I want to know more about because it's one we don't know about. But just that pose. I love it. I love it. I love it. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you are thinking. What is your favorite? I'm excited for all of them, except for the Locust Destroyer. Um, but yeah, the whole range, I think, is very exciting you get the long-legged creepy boys, <laughs> um, <laughs> which are really cool. But then you get like the old ancient gods in the Void Dragon, which would normally not fit with this kind of army. They're two very, very different things. And I always had a problem with the old Catans, where it was all like a natural organic shape. With the Void Dragon, you have the wings and the head and the... Um, I guess the pixelated cutting up of the body, which ties into the Silent King's cloak, has the same design in there. And I think this is a good compromise between the two. You have a physical body, but it is very mechanized and necronized. Contemporary necronized. Let's call it that. So yeah, leave a comment below what you're most excited about. And if you are interested in these videos, definitely subscribe because we've always have more coming out every week. But until next time, thank you for watching.